Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into one of the coolest developments in generative modeling, the conditional GAN or CGN. We'll explore what it is, why it was introduced, and then walk through a complete implementation from scratch, line by line, using PyTorch. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll not only understand the theory, but also how to build and train one yourself. So let's start with a simple question. Why did we need conditional GANs when GANs were already working? To answer that, let's rewind just a bit. In a standard GAN, you feed in a random vector, usually noise, and the generator learns to create data, like images, that looks real. The discriminator tries to tell apart real from fake. But here's the catch. GANs are uncontrolled. You can't tell them what kind of image to generate. Want a three? Tough luck, you might get a seven or a blurry mess. This is where conditional GANs come in. Conditional GANs let us generate specific outputs based on a condition, typically a label like the digit three in NIST. In essence, it's like saying, hey generator, here's some noise and a label three. Now give me something that looks like a handwritten three. That's the magic of cans. They give us control. What is a conditional GAN? A CGN is basically an extension of the GAN architecture. But instead of just feeding random noise to the generator, we also give it a condition, typically a label encoded as a one-hot vector. The discriminator also receives this label, so it can judge whether an image label pair is valid. CGAN architecture. Let's walk through this diagram to understand how CANs work step by step. 1. Random vector, Z, and labels, Y. We start with two inputs, a random noise vector Z, a label Y, let's say the digit nine. The label is converted to a one-hot vector, a vector of size 10 where the ninth index is one and all others are zero. Two, generator. This noise and the label vector are processed and combined by the generator network. The generator learns to transform this input into a realistic image that represents the given label, say a nine. Three, discriminator. On the other side, we have the discriminator. It takes both real images from NIST and fake images from the generator, along with their labels, and tries to predict whether each image label pair is real or fake. For real or fake decision, the discriminator outputs a single number, close to one real, close to zero fake. This feedback is used to train both the generator and the discriminator in a game theoretic way. Let's jump into the PyTorch implementation of this CGN. I'll walk you through every line so nothing's left to the imagination. We begin with standard imports for deep learning, data loading, and visualization. Torch, NNA.functional, is especially important for custom activations and losses. Hyperparameters. These set up our training batch size, random noise size for the generator, learning rates, and leaky ELU alpha values for both networks. We use NIST, the classic handwritten digits dataset. It's perfect for testing generative models. This condition module transforms the label into a form that can be combined with noise or image features. Remember, NIST labels are just integers zero to nine, but we first convert them to one hot vectors of size 10. This layer turns that into a learned embedding of size out underscore size and applies leaky ELU activation. This is a simple utility module to reshape the output of the generator, crucial when moving from dense layers back into image format for convolutional processing. It ensures the output has the correct image shape. The generator is where the magic happens. It takes two things, a random noise vector and the label you want to generate, like the number seven. The label goes through a small network that turns it into something more useful for the generator. Then, both the noise and the label info are combined. This combo is passed through a few layers that gradually build up an image. Uh, finally, we use a sigmoid function to make sure all pixel values are between 0 and 1. The result is a 28 by 28 image, just like a NIST digit. The discriminator's job is to tell whether an image label pair is real or fake. It takes an image and the label it's supposed to represent, like a picture and the number 3. The label goes through its own little network to turn it into something the model can work with. Then it combines that with the image itself. 
This full combo goes through a few layers and outputs a single score whether real or fake. We're using binary cross entropy with logits. Why logits? Because this loss function includes a numerically stable sigmoid, so we don't apply sigmoid inside the discriminator. We also set up atom optimizers for both generator and discriminator. Let's move on to the training loop, where both networks learn together, the generator trying to fool the discriminator and the discriminator trying to catch it. Each iteration, we generate fake images from noise plus labels, compute discriminator loss using both real and fake, backpropagate and update discriminator, then generate again and train the generator to fool the discriminator. This is the classic adversarial loop where both networks improve together. After training, we evaluate the generator using fixed labels from 0 to 9. This is how we check whether the CGAN has learned to generate specific digits based on condition. If everything worked well, we should see clear digits from 0 to 9 aligned in a row. Now, let's take a look at the generated outputs. In the very first epoch, you can see the images are quite blurry, just random patterns without much structure. Jumping to the 50th epoch, you'll notice the images are starting to form clearer shapes. They're still not perfect, but definitely much better than at the start. Finally, if we check the results from the last epoch, the images are sharp and much more realistic compared to the earlier ones. This shows how, over time, the generator learns to create images that closely resemble real handwritten digits. If this helped demystify cans for you, give this video a like, subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments what topic you'd like us to dive into next. Until next time, keep coding and keep learning.